church circles we're like we we can't imagine fessing up about stuff going on in our lives because we're afraid that people are going to say you're a christian and you do that you go to church and you do that or that's something that you're going after or that you believe in or that you're trying to stand up for you're a christian and you do that we're afraid of being rejected by the people around us so we put on this mask and be someone that we're not in order to not be rejected next one Next reason, we don't want to burden, burden others. I would say a lot of us don't share some of the things going on in our lives because we don't want to be the one to waste someone else's time, and we don't think that other people are going to care about the stuff that's going on in our lives. <coughs> Next reason why we wear masks and we are someone that we aren't is because we feel isolated. And sometimes when there's sin or crap going on in your life or something that you're doing or not doing that you're supposed to be doing, um, you think that you're the only one who has to deal with that thing. You think you're the only one who's ever had this struggle. You're the only one of your friends who have ever gone through this thing. The last reason that I think we wear masks is because we would honestly rather live in sin. We would rather keep doing the things that we're doing and knowing that they're wrong rather than someone calling us out for it and us growing from it. We think that it's easier to live in sin because consequences can be really hard. Um, we're afraid what would happen to our lives if we try to actually go out and fix those things. And we're afraid of condemnation. Um, another word for condemnation is disapproval, disdain, criticism, blame. We're afraid of being blamed. We're afraid of criticism. We're afraid of disapproval. We're afraid of people looking at us and being like, whoa, back up. And here is the sad truth, I think, is of the result of these things. The reason we wear masks, I think um, it comes down to the sad truth. Here are, here's what I think are the result of wearing masks. Um, number one, exhaustion from trying to maintain this image that you've projected. Your friends see you a certain way. You got a certain personality trait. You got things that you do or don't do. Um, and they're not true to who you are, but you've built yourself a reputation. And you're afraid that 
if you don't keep maintaining your image that you've already projected, um, you're going to be looked down upon or judged. And so you get exhausted from trying to be this person at school and this person at church, this person at home, this person at school, this person at home, this person at church. You try to maintain all these different identities, and it wears you out, which then can lead to isolation and loneliness. And people think you are who you said you are. And so when you actually have something that's going on, you have no one really to talk to because you've isolated yourself. You don't want to. You don't want to reveal who you truly are anymore because people already think you're this certain person. And so you're kind of isolated. You have no one to talk to. And the, the saddest part is the result of wearing masks leads to some big emotional issues. I'm not saying it's the only reason that people have emotional issues, but it's one of them. And people who can't, who have to maintain this image of themselves all the time, people who um, feel isolated and lonely usually wind up in depression. Usually wind up suicidal. Not usually wind up suicidal. Can wind up suicidal. Suicidal thoughts. And do you think that it's any coincidence that this poor guy from Skyline a couple months ago had all these things going on for him, was like the ideal student. So it sounded like he was an awesome guy. It also sounded like he was projecting an image of who he actually, that's not who he actually was. And look at the result. And it, it just breaks my heart because there are people your age, high schoolers, people in this room who wind up killing themselves because they're so lonely, so isolated, and have nowhere to turn. And um, guys, people everywhere are crying out for someone who's going to love them for who they are. They're, they're crying out for someone who's going to meet them in their mess. They're crying out for someone who's going to see them for exactly who they are and what they've done and still say, I love you. I care about you. I don't condemn you. I don't reject you. And meanwhile, Jesus Christ is looking right at the at them. He's looking right at you. He's looking right at me with these outstretched arms that say, I am right here. You've been searching for this person who's going to accept you for who you are, who you don't have to wear a mask around, who you can just be yourself with, and I'm right here. Christ has been there the whole time. He says, I love you. What does Romans 8 say? Isaac, throw it up. Romans 8 says, for, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus Christ. And that word condemnation, like we said, means disapproval, disdain, criticism, blame. And on Microsoft Word today, I looked at the synonyms for these two words, no and condemnation. And here's what I found. found. No condemnation for anyone who belongs to Christ means not at all blame, not any disapproval, not one criticism, certainly not any attack. There is no condemnation, there is no judgment, there is no criticism, blame, disapproval for anything that you are or anything that you are not or anything that you do that you're not supposed to do or anything that you don't do that you should have done. There is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus Christ. It's huge. Jesus says that you can be who you are in all of your mess, and there is no condemnation. And I don't care if you're in this room and you've got a porn addiction, if you use drugs, if you're cheating on a boyfriend or a girlfriend emotionally or physically, if you've got the body image issues or eating disorders, or you've been verbally or physically abused or sexually abused. Ladies, one in three girls under 18 have been sexually abused. And you're not alone if, that's, if you're in this room and that's you. And what you've done or what's been done to you, it does not matter. There is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus Christ. And that is the biggest reason why we get to take off these masks and just be who we are and not worry about what other people think. It's huge. But here's a temptation. The temptation is to leave our issues in the dark and to leave the mask on. In the dark where you hide your issues, where your mask is on, where no one can see, where you can deceive yourself, you can't address these issues properly. You cannot build things. You cannot work on things well when they're in the dark. Look at the paper that you drew when your eyes were closed. 
Some of you may have some artistic ability and maybe nailed it pretty good. Look at the paper you drew when your eyes are closed. And now look at the paper that you drew when your eyes were open. If you took it seriously, hopefully you'll see a marked difference. What I'm trying to illustrate to you guys is when, you draw, when you're working on things in the light, when you bring your issues out and you don't hide them and your masks are off and when your small group can see and when you stop lying to yourself about what actually is going on, when you can actually address these things, you can build something better by God's grace. You can make something better by God's grace. <coughs> when things are in the light, you can actually work on them. When they're in the dark, they wind up being really horrible attempts to draw something good. And some of you are, one, are in this room, you've been coming to this church your whole life, and you're wondering why you're not seeing any change in your life. You're wondering, if Jesus is real, how come I still do this? How come I have to deal with this? How come this person does that? You're not seeing any change or any progress in your life. And my question to you would be, is are your issues in the dark or are your issues in the light? Are you choosing to hide what's actually going on or are you bringing them out to deal with them in your small group with your peers? Do you have the mask on or have you taken it off? Only by bringing it into the light can we make something that actually makes sense. We can only make things the way we want to be when they're out in the light. And so here's, here's what I feel like you answer that. It's like you're thinking, yeah, I want to bring things to the light. And though Jesus doesn't condemn me, I got these people in my small group and people in my church that I'm afraid if I say things to them, if I tell them things about my life and let them in, I'm going to get judged. They're not going to look at me the same. And I don't want to mess up the good friendships that I have in church and in small group. And if that's true... If there are people in your small group that you feel like are going to judge you or condemn you and not reflect Jesus Christ to you as you open up your heart to them, then come talk to me and I'm going to make sure those right conversations happen. I'm going to make sure that we, we talk it through, you and I, or Liz and you, or your small group leader and you, and then we make it so that you're comfortable sharing these things in your life with people in your small group who can actually help you, who are going through the same things, who know people who are going through the same things. And it's it, it can be a place of light and healing and hope for you instead of, I'm just going to come to small group and I'm going to talk about my grades and I'm going to just BS about this and that so that I don't have to talk about what's actually going on in my life. Reasons to be yourself. Reasons to take off the mask at the end of the day. Isaac, can you throw those four reasons why not, why people do wear masks back up? Reasons to be yourself. You cannot be rejected because you are accepted by Jesus. If everybody on this planet was to reject you for who you are, Jesus Christ would not. He would not because of who he is, not because of who you are. You are not a burden to others. Let me just ask you this. Has someone ever been real with you? Has someone actually ever told you something really deep that was going on in, your, in their life and they've confided in you? How does that make you feel? It makes you feel pretty darn good, I would say, that someone cares enough about you, trusts you enough, where they feel open to sharing things that are going on in their life with you. And my question to you then is if you think you're going to be a burden to others by sharing what's going on in your life, why would you rob someone of that chance to feel that feeling of um, like being honored and blessed because, because you've confided in them? Does that make sense? Why would you rob someone else of that if that brings you so much joy when someone confides in you? You don't have to be isolated. When people know you for who you are, there's nothing that you have to hide. Nothing you have to hide. And Jesus has broken the power over sin in your life, so you no longer have to live in sin. There is no fake image you have to maintain. And if the Lord God, the creator of the heavens and earth, the one who made everything that we could ever possibly comprehend, from big to small, if he doesn't condemn you, who can? Who can? If God is for us, then who could ever stop us? You're going to small groups tonight. I don't know what your plan is to split people up. Um, it's like the freshman guys that are back there. I want you to.
to feel encouraged to just take the mask off. Stop talking about, you know, I, I, I know that there are things in your life that are, are worse than the D you got on last week's math test. I know there are things that are, are, are going better in your life than the fact that your dog just had puppies. Those are, okay, those are both valid things. A D on a math test sucks. And then uh, a dog having puppies, I would probably steal a puppy. But <laughs> those are not the hard issues we're trying to go after in small groups. If you allow your stuff to be in the light, I promise it'll be a long process of healing. It'll take a long time for it to work, for you know you to really understand how Jesus works in that. But I promise you, it will be dealt with. And just talking about it and getting it out there is huge. So I encourage you tonight in your small groups, take the mask off. Just be real. What's your happy crappies for the week? Oh, I had a really horrible day because I came home and my parents were fighting. And that makes me feel like crap. That's a little more real than... I got a B in my math test. I'm still, that's pretty good. I got a B. I'm gonna pray. We're gonna split up from here. A B. And uh, I invite you to get out your group. Father, thank you for this uh, this great night. God, I feel, I just feel the weight of people in this room, the emotional level. God, there are just, there are people in here who are just buried under the weight of trying to be someone they're not. We're just buried under trying to put the happy face on for the world, meanwhile being isolated and lonely inside. Who are buried by trying to live two separate lives, one here and one there. God, I pray that in this mess that we call our life, that you would meet us and help us understand that you love us and about us, and you are crazy about us, and you do not condemn us, no matter what is going on in our lives. You remain faithful, and there is nothing that can separate us from your love. So I pray that people in this room who are feeling that weight would understand that they're accepted through you, they're loved through you, they're cared about through you, and even if the whole world was to turn their back still stand there with your arms wide open and receive them. God, I pray against any reason that someone would not feel comfortable sharing what's actually going on in their life with their group. This is a safe place for people. Like Jeff Bethy says, church is not a museum for good people. It's a hospital for the broken. And I pray that tonight our small groups can be, can start being so much pride 